Hey, Naveen, guess what? I got a haircut. Can't you tell? Okay, even though I really did get a haircut, this is not the point of the video. I know I'm a little early, and I know this is not the topic that we agreed on, but I have to do this. I've been watching this incredible uh, YouTube series called Why Do People Laugh at Creationists? Link down here. And it's just, it's, it's incredible. I love how accurately um, the uh, creator of the series conveys basic scientific truth and outlines the stupidity of the creationist argument. So this led me to uh, wanting to make this video, which is um, a bit of a take on uh, the Islamic front, if you want to call it that, on the whole evolution versus creation, the Big Bang Theory versus the story of Genesis, let there be light sort of thing. Um, so as you are probably, hopefully, aware, unless you've been living under a rock for the last 20 years or so, or 150 more specifically, um, there's a very, very big, um, so I, I guess you could call it a power struggle between uh, right-wing conservative Christians or uh, young earth creationists or Christian Judaic rejectors of the theory of evolution and Darwin's theory of natural selection. I don't know if any of those terms made sense, but you get the idea of who I'm referring to. A big power struggle between those people and the scientific world, because the science, the facts presented by science are so diametrically opposed to um, the very, very detailed creation process that is uh, described in the book of Genesis that just reconciling the two stories doesn't seem possible for a lot of people. Uh, I'm not saying, this is my disclaimer, that all Christians have a problem with evolution and, or that all scientists have a problem with Christianity or even Judaism because they both have the same creation story. Um, I'm just saying that it's an issue, as is clear from court cases to press releases to articles to just YouTube users ranting on about this stuff. And I just want to present, present a bit of another side. Um, what, has been, what has been the case thus far um, is there has been no contradiction between uh, scientific fact or scientific theory and the Islamic perspective on creation. There's no contradiction, mostly because there isn't a detailed process of evolution. Um, sure, there are some similarities, such as the whole six days thing, and then on the seventh, God rested upon his throne, and all that stuff, but there is no age to the earth. There's nothing mentioned about the age of the earth. A Muslim can't tell you how old the earth is based on readings in the Quran. It's just, it's just not there. And so there's really no contradiction. The only real basis there is to creation is that if God wishes something to be, God just wills it to exist and then it does exist. But that does not imply that the existence is immediate or, or spontaneous. Uh, it's not necessary that um, Adam was created within a matter of seconds, minutes, hours, uh, six days. Well, I mean, how do you define six days when you don't have the sun and the earth, really? Um, and um, also, this is sort of my own personal take on something. There's this one uh, verse in the Quran that reads in Arabic um, something like, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا آدَمْ مِنْ سُلَالَةٍ مِنْ طِينٍ which is basically describing Adam as created from uh, clay. Um, you can take that as a metaphor for organic matter, you can take that for whatever, really. But what's interesting is the word sulala. People have, have explained that word to mean uh, a lump or a piece, uh, but you can, an alternate meaning to that word in Arabic is also um, a chain or a lineage. So if you were to consider it as a lineage of clay, then this you could, I'm not saying it is, but you could hypothetically interpret it as a reference to uh, the sort of primordial soup, uh, these ideal conditions um, around four billion, four and a half billion years ago, uh, when life on Earth, we believe, began uh, out of organic non-living material into organic living material, very simplistic, albeit, and then gradually evolved into the life that we see today. Uh, there is no contradiction between the idea that species evolve and humans evolve and life evolves uh, and the Islamic perspective because there's just no 
specific religious perspective on this. There's no viewpoint. No Muslim will sit down and outline to you exactly how the universe started and how it's going to end. Sure, we believe in a beginning and we believe in an end where, you know, basically the end of the world. Um, but none of it is very specific. It's all very metaphorical. That's a very important aspect of, of uh, the language of the Islamic scripture is that it's very, very poetic. It's considered a miracle of rhetoric uh, in the sense that it's, it's connotations and, and figurative language is to a level that is unmatched by any other um, man-made literature is the, is the Muslim perspective. Um, and so because of that, very, very little of it beyond the uh, explanations of how to deal with death, marriage, divorce, and so on is clearly laid out. They're all just poetic lines exalting God in his glory and exalting creation uh, and all of that. But none of it really translates to very much on paper, uh, at least not in a very direct way, you understand. Um, so really what my point is here is I'm just urging people not to immediately associate religion with a lack of intelligence or dissociate science from religion. There are many, many respectable scientists who are of various faiths, Hindu, Baha'i, Muslim, Buddhist, Christian, Jewish, atheist, agnostic, all of these belief systems, or I mean, I guess you could call atheism a belief system or a lack thereof. Uh, I guess it is the belief that this is the only life we have, so I guess that works. Rambling focus. Um, and many of them are able to reconcile their uh, religious identities with their scientific identities. It is not an impossibility. It just takes perhaps more of an open mind. Uh, and I would ask people not to jump to the conclusion that uh, religious fanatics, not, well, I mean, religious fanatics are pretty fucked up people. Uh, what I mean to say is just because someone is in touch with their faith does not mean that they have to reject uh, certain aspects of scientific fact or scientific theory. Like you said, there are various, various definitions or extremes or levels of definition through religion for every individual, and these vary uh, greatly from one person to the next, uh, and even more so between countries uh, across linguistic borders and so on. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's really just a bit of a blurb on uh, evolution and Islam and people, and I don't kind of know if I got all my point across, but I hope that I did. You get the idea. Islam and evolution, they're okay, we're good, there's no problem, life can move on, we're not going to try and censor people that tell us we evolved from apes, because that's not a problem here. People who do think it's a problem probably have a bit of a misunderstanding of what is or is not in the Quran. See you in the next video where we talk about, or where I talk about the topic we agreed on. I don't remember what it is. Yes, 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 yes. Historical heroes are pedestal people uh, in Islamic history. Excited. Can't wait for your video. Take care.